now I'll start recording on my end. Um, I just like to make a backup of everything. So this is Supporting Everyday Learning, CNIE, April 20, 2021, and I'm Stephen Dabbs. So welcome. Um, it's it's hard to uh, <laughs> do this. Uh, during the uh, keynote yesterday, um, we were told that this was the first virtual conference that CNIE has ever had. It's not completely true. Um, back in, yes, that says 1996, a group of colleagues and I put together something called Online Teaching and Learning for what was then the Canadian Association for Distance Education. And that was a session for the uh, Wise and Witty Wednesdays, which later became the Wise and Witty Weekdays. Uh, and it was a pretty good example of the this, this sort of thing that counted as, uh, to use the quote, supporting everyday learning that happened in the past. Now, I haven't seen any of these for a very long time. They seem to have disappeared. Uh, but they were pretty, they were a regular in uh, our field back then. Uh, you know, when I, it's, it's, gee, it's like 20 years ago now? No, it's 40 years ago now. <laughs> Just a, a few months shy of that. I started as a, uh, a new student, first year student at the University of Calgary. And the very first thing that I did uh, was not to go to class. It was to go to the student newspaper, the gauntlet, and sign on. And my work with the student newspaper became as important a part of my education as my classes. What was great about the student newspaper is that we were producing, uh, we, we first were doing two issues a week and then one issue a week. Um, we had to produce and it was, you know, day after day, we were producing stories, producing articles, etc. And as well, on the other side of it, we were providing learning for people day after day week after week and this journalistic streak um, has defined a lot of the work that I've done over the years in online learning and to a large degree I think defines my own approach to online learning and I think that there is a great deal that colleges and universities can learn especially in this digital age from the world of newspapers, magazines, etc. So I want to begin with thinking about what is everyday learning? And, uh, you know, from PBS Learning, they say learning does not take place only in the classroom. We observe animal friends or sometimes enemies in the background. We get out and walk around. We pick out new shapes. We look at pieces of art. Uh, but I would go beyond that. We watch TV. We listen to radio. Those of us who still listen to radio, podcasts, other media. We talk to friends. Um, you know, there is a huge amount of learning that takes place outside the formal context of learning. And I want to be clear about what I mean by everyday learning. What I mean is not this, uh, you know, something that we do daily inside a course. No, what I mean is something that we do daily. Yeah, it doesn't have to be every single day, but you get the idea. And there are other things in our lives that happen. Courses, projects, hobbies, work, vacations, whatever, right? But it's not course defined, it's learning defined. And I know that this isn't the model that we use in schools, colleges, and universities. But my argument here, and this is an argument, is that 
it is more and more one that these institutions, our institutions, should be turning to. And so that's the kind of message that I'm trying to get across today is that there are things that we can do to support ed everyday learning as learning institutions. So we're going to test the interactive features of this workshop. Uh, I don't have a list in front of me of all the people who are here, but uh, what we're going to do is try a jam board. Oh, I guess we don't have a whole lot of people here. We have a few people. So um, if I could get somebody to pop the jam board link into the chat, please. Um, because I don't have already done. Okay. So log into the jam board log in. All you have to do is click on the link and you should be taken straight into the jam board. Yes, I see you all there. Now, you can if you want, if you click the little, hold on, let me pop over here, right screen. Okay, so you can click this little T and start typing. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can click on the pen and type that way. Um, or if you're feeling adventurous, you can add a sticky note. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you is what works. So the question I'm going to ask is, uh, I've forgotten my question. <laughs> the, the question that I'm going to ask is, what's your every day? If you think about what you learn every day or what things you do every day even, I'll clear the frame and now type in, write in, whatever, what's your every day? And uh, I'm going to capture this for posterity and actually put that in the slide, in this slide, so that people can see it. I had sort of hoped for like hundreds of people so that this would fill with messages, but ah, if you're a small but mighty group, you can still fill it with messages. And I'll put one of my own in just as an example. Reading the newspaper. So we got reading team interactions, walking the dog, coffee. Yes, love coffee. Coffee's good. Working, training my puppy, watching series. Okay. Oh, somebody's going to put theirs at an angle. Trying out new recipes. That's a good one. Nobody's going to try writing with the pen, eh? I'll put one in. I can see why nobody's using the pen. <laughs> Boy, that's hard, isn't it? There. <laughs> Helping kids with hope, homework. Teams checking with check-ins with team. Yeah, actually that's one that we use quite a bit here. Browsing HE publication, podcasts all day. And what's interesting in our field now is that you can do podcasts all day. So, Googling random questions. I'll give it just a few more seconds here. I know I see one more person who has the symbol of a bull writing. So, it's filling up nicely. Cooking. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to what do you got snipping tool. I hate when all the icons disappear like that on Windows. I don't know if it happens to other people, but all right, and I'm going to capture that. Get it? Copy. Voila! A learning object is born. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to save that. I'm going to save that so that CL1. All right. So, yeah, uh, you get the idea. Uh, everybody does something every day to learn. Um, and, you know, we, 
on reflection, we can probably think of many, many more things. Trying to find my PowerPoint again. Here we go. Oh, Came back. Oh, it moved. <laughs> so here's my every day. <laughs> um, and actually, it's, it's probably not really different from your every day. I have files that I access. I have documents that I work on, slides that I work on, like the slides that you're looking at, audio, video, email, even the weather, right? Um, social media, baseball, because I'm a baseball fan, uh, blogs, services like my bank, websites, travel, when back in the days when there was travel, um, even the stuff at NRC, we have something called GCpedia, which is a Wikipedia for government employees, GC Connects and GC Collab, which are like uh, discussion boards. Federal Science Library, and the rest. So here's a tool that I depend on for this. And uh, this is the, the, the first of the tools that I would like to introduce you to. Um, let, well, I guess I can't see your chats, but I was going to say, uh, see who has experience with Feedly. But let's explore feedly for a second and if you would like you can follow along all you have to do is click or type in this link to feedly.com and so here we are um, this is my personal feedly area now if you haven't used feedly before let's find a browser i never use oh like edge <laughs> Um, I don't think I'm logged in. Yeah, so this is what it'll look like for you. So the way to start using it is just click on this get started for free button and then you can continue with Google or you can sign in with Feedly and I, I would just typically continue with Google because it's easy. It'll force me to sign in on Google because I, like I said I don't use this browser ever. I remember my password okay so now I'm loading up again this is my personal Feedly so the thing with Feedly is uh, all these different websites uh, you know the the 41 percent of all websites that are powered by WordPress and magazines and, and uh, other blogs uh, YouTube even pretty much well not every site but the majority of sites that publish recurring content online produce something called an RSS feed and we don't need to know anything about that all we need to know is this plus sign here we click on the plus sign we can search and you know they'll, they'll recommend a bunch of things but if we find a site that we're interested in like oh say mine <laughs> uh, so I'll just click on mine and let's see if there's anything that Feedly can find we'll come back to Feedly just what I did is I copied the link and now control V to paste the link I'll hit enter and oh it's picking up old ol daily json so it's not necessarily rss content but when you see something you just click on the link and okay it doesn't have any entries at the moment that's true i have neglected my json feed badly um but uh you know pick any of these any website you want let's click on Columbia Journalism, Media and Entertainment. So this is actually a list. It's a bundle of feeds. So the Media and Entertainment bundle, I'll follow all. And where will I put them? Well, I can create categories, or as they're calling them here, new feeds. So I'll just find, say, oh, I don't know. I'll pick one. 
I'm trying to find one quickly. <laughs> oh, media. Media. And I'll just add. And so now I've followed this bundle. And now I'll scroll down here to where I have media. When you start out, it won't have so many items. But here's media. Here's all the things that I just subscribed to. So let's look at one of the media play news. So here we can see so, some articles. This just came in, so I had no idea what was here. Um, but uh, Dakota Johnson to star in Jane Austen adaptation persuasion for Netflix. Well, okay, big deal. But if I was interested in that, I would just click on this headline. And now I'm into the actual story and so on so there are tons of sites out there and uh, if you were ever to go to my site you would see uh, links to many of these sites um, about online learning technology or any subject that you're interested in um, and uh, you can follow them all in Feedly and RSS Reader. And so that's the first of the tools that I wanted to introduce in this session today. Now, I want to give some examples of everyday learning. Just to kind of stimulate your thinking about what they, what they could possibly be. So here are a few. Uh, the magazines themselves that are put out by institutions and and it's interesting I picked these three MIT Technology Review, Stanford Social Innovation Review and Harvard Business Review for one reason, well a few reasons, but one of the reasons is they're from big name institutions. But I think that there are big name universe, big name institutions partially because they do things like publish these magazines. And try as I might, like I thought about this, I can't find anything similar from Canadian institutions. And I don't know if someone knows of one, you can uh, share it in the chat. Uh, but I don't know of any. So right off the bat, these magazines are providing a kind of everyday learning uh, that represents an opportunity for Canadian institutions. Just recently, the Open University of China was given a UNESCO award for its support for rural learners. It put... Um, I don't think they're iPads, but they look like iPads, uh, into their hands and got them involved in being able to access learning resources as needed from wherever they're needed, whether working the field, the farm, wherever. That's an example of supporting everyday learning. Here's another example from the Canada School of Public Service. It's called bus rides. Guess where these are intended to be used? Yes, <laughs> on the bus. And basically what they wanted to, to do is to introduce the School of Public Service to public servants because so many public servants don't really use the school. And they wanted to give them an idea of what the school is and what it's doing these days. So the School of Public Service has gone through a number of projects recently where they've transferred a lot of their learning from traditional in-class learning to frankly much better and much more accessible online learning events. Yeah, there's still courses, but a lot of what they're doing now is consists of these everyday learning kind of opportunities. Here's something from Clark Aldrich that he calls short sims. Basically what he does is he talks about developing online scenarios 
where people learn by doing. But it's not a major commitment. You know, you're not saying, well, gee, I'm going to work on this for 40 hours. It's something where you can do it quickly and easily, get the experience, and then move on to the next thing. Daily photos. Something that I've been involved in, well, as it turns out, I guess, for 14 years. Um, the idea is that participants, uh, in theory, create a photo a day and then share it with other people in the group. You might think, well, that's not learning. Well, you should see my photography 14 years ago as compared to my photography today. And you would be forced to conclude that yes, indeed, it is a kind of everyday learning. Jim Groom has taken this to a high art in something called the DS106 Daily Create. And basically what they do is they put out an item every day, uh, a topic or a creation idea. And the idea is to create something new every day doesn't have to be good, doesn't have to be, well, a professional. Uh, and we've, we can see the quality of some of the stuff. But the main thing is people are creating, and that's what matters. Here's another one. I didn't participate in it, but Doug Belshaw just finished it. 100 days to offload. It's a daily writing exercise. If you're in journalism, you know that you want to be doing daily writing exercises. Um, if you're in school, like public school, you may have gone to an English class where uh, the teacher had you doing daily writing exercises. But most people, I think, stopped the exercise when the class stopped. That's why we need to be thinking outside the class for this sort of thing. Um, I do daily writing exercises, and again, it's a learning activity. Here's an example of my daily writing exercises. It's my newsletter, OL Daily. Now, it's an exercise for me in daily writing, but it's also a way of supporting everyday learning. You can see my, my journalistic roots coming out in this publication. Uh, but, you know, I think that doing something like this certainly has helped the cause of online learning generally and, and open learning in particular. I think it's advanced the knowledge in the field, but also it's a kind of public outreach for the subject. And I've heard back from people around the world. I just got email, in fact, today from Kazakhstan wanting to work together on something. And I thought, well... Kazakhstan, that's great. Um, and it's also a good calling card for my employer, the National Research Council of Canada, because it's a very visible manifestation of the service that it offers to Canadians. Can you think of more examples? You probably can. And in fact, I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. We'll go back to the Jamboard. I need to find it. Whoops, that's not it. That's not it. Where did it go? <laughs> Where did it go? I've lost it. There it is. So we'll go back to the Jamboard. I'm going to clear the frame. And can you think of examples of everyday learning along the lines of what I've just described or maybe something completely different, something that I've missed. And again, all you need to do is open up the Jamboard on your own computer and type your contribution. Okay, I have to be the world's worst person at supporting collaborative activities. <laughs> uh, 
maybe you don't have that URL again. Oh, fine. Yes, it is. People are waiting. In, oh, that was ages ago. People. No, no, it was 15 minutes ago. Let's try putting this link into the chat again. Oops, that's not the link. Why wouldn't it not be? There we go. I've put the link back in the chat. Still nothing. Oh, we got one person. I'm so vindicated now. <laughs> the question is, um, can you think of examples of ways or, or projects that support everyday learning along the lines of the sorts of examples that I just gave? Book clubs, that's a great example. And for those of you who are not familiar with book clubs, the idea is you get a group of people together, you read a book, and and you talk about it. It's that simple. Uh, who is it? Uh, Jenny McNess has been um, either participating or leading in uh, a group of people who've been reading books about educational theory. Uh, for example, recently um, they read and commented on uh, one of Bell Hooks' books um, and special interest groups is also an excellent suggestion. Communities of practice similarly. These are things, uh, in fact, I participate in both kinds of things. Uh, I participate, and I'll, I'll look at some of the tools, but one of the tools I don't mention, because I forgot, is Google Groups. Uh, currently on BC campus, we're doing a book club on Small Teaching Online by Flower Darby. And you have 79 registrants. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, you don't need to depend on sessions like this. Organize something for yourself like that. And it's fun when there's so many people. List serves, absolutely. Uh, you know, a, a mailing list. You could set up a mailing list using a program called ListServ, or there are uh, other applications. Or you can use Google Groups, and Google Groups will again do the mailing for you as well. So you got the idea. So I'm going to capture this. Whoops. In fact, I, I want to capture the comment as well, because why not? And I can, except I've lost it. Here we go. I'll just move it over. Now I'll try capturing again. File save as SEL2. All right. Let's consider some types of everyday learning. And again, I'll just sort of breeze through these, but uh, every one of these slides has a link that allows you to linger and follow and look at what they've been doing to support everyday learning. So 
So one type is conversations or debates. And this is taken from a paper where they're doing that in China. Their debates are, are more structured, but they have a topic-based discussion where they're looking at cases on the role of information technology, the David, etc., and then the actual comment themselves. Projects and activities, and I linked here to something called machine learning projects for 2021. Uh, and if you go to this link, it's exactly as the title suggests. It's a whole bunch of machine learning projects. Now, you might not be interested in machine learning. That's fine. And this probably isn't for you. But if you are, or if you know someone who is, this is something that can keep you occupied for part of the day for well, the rest of your life, probably. Link sharing. Link sharing it was one of the original activities on the web where you would find a link and maybe comment on it and share it with your friends. Now, there used to be a site called Delicious that did that. Uh, now people use services like Tumblr or Pinterest, I guess, is the latest thing. And what I've done down here is I've shared a link to a link sharing site, Pinterest, on the topic of link sharing and distance learning ideas. Resource centers. Setting up a resource center. This is something that would require more institutional support, but it's a widely popular way of supporting community and public learning. The link here is something called Media Smarts. And uh, it used to be called the Media Learning Center. Oh, jeez, I've forgotten the name of it. Um, but basically, uh, digital, yeah, Media Literacy Center. Uh, it's an organization that supports digital and media literacy along with critical thinking skills. And it hosts online events, posts resources, etc to support this kind of learning in the community. Video series. Something that any institution can do. You can do it you know, with fairly high production values or you can do it with less production value, like this video maybe. Um, I've done a bunch over the years. Some are good, some are not so good but the main thing is they're getting you know the ideas and the information out there this link is to something by Stephen Fry who you have heard of and you know you think about the benefits to people but also the benefits to Stephen Fry in doing something like this his video series is laws of cricket very useful for someone like me who knows nothing about cricket but would find it probably a good alternative when there's no baseball because baseball season is over. Volumetric video is something I saw in a presentation at this conference yesterday. And basically it's the production of a video of a 3D object. The video itself is 3D. So as you play the video, you can rotate the model around. And let's have a look at one of these. I think you might enjoy this. That's a volumetric video. And you see, I can manipulate this as it's playing. And we'll have to start it over again to keep it going. And there are various other volumetric videos in this website called sketchfab.com. Now, again, this isn't the sort of thing that you can necessarily do as an individual, but it is the sort of thing that 
an institution could do if the institution you know was so inclined what else do we have the tech the, the big question because you know it's not automatic that these things appear out of nowhere they need to be produced somehow and at least a part of this workshop is about the tech that's needed to produce these things so in this section I'm going to outline a few tools and we'll have a look a deeper look at one of them so Moodle allows you to create a whole bunch of different kinds of activities and there's a whole list of them here um, and the thing with Moodle though is as a learning management system you have to sign into it uh, which makes it really hard to use to support everyday learning you have to enroll in classes and all of that so I included a link down here at the bottom to revamp Moodle oh it's it's down here sorry uh, if you can't why can't you see it um, anyhow there we go uh, it's down here to make your Moodle course public without asking users to log in as a guest a, a guest and that makes your Moodle course a lot more accessible to people another one is coincidentally called cricket and guess how I found the uh, the resource on cricket yes uh, I landed on Stephen Fry's course while I was looking for something completely different uh, cricket is something uh, offered by Thompson Rivers University or offered they're just setting it up and again I saw it in a presentation um, at this conference yesterday it's based on Alan Levine's smallest possible learning object technology or tool I forget what the T stands for and specifically call it something called splot box and that's something you can add to WordPress and the idea here is that you can create a mechanism t to allow people to upload collections of media content where contributions can be made without requiring logins or providing personally identifying information and you kind of see the theme to some of these uh, you know some of these projects and activities uh, where people can access them without signing over their life without paying money in fact without barriers that slow them down and Cricket is a good example of this and I invite you to follow the link to Cricket or, or more accurate well there's not much in Cricket yet but in Splot uh, there's lots of stuff there podcasting uh, here are some services that allow you to podcast uh, SoundCloud basically you can record your podcast right from your desktop or mobile phone uh, I tend to record the audio using the audio recorder on my phone and the reason why I like to you to do that is because it's producing as I speak the transcript of what I'm saying so that I'm creating not only the audio but I'm also creating the text for my audio at the same time and I find that really helpful and important for accessibility purposes and if I can figure it out and it's probably just the simple thing I'd have this transcript playing somewhere on my video as as I'm actually giving this uh, workshop um, there are other video conferencing tools that are already doing this automatically for example the Microsoft Teams service this is only going to get better but the main point here is 
simply recording some audio describing you know an interesting educational topic is one of the best ways of supporting everyday learning uh, there's a site out there um, and I'm gonna have to search for it because history of philosophy without any gaps and here it is so this is a podcast he's on episode 370 yes he has gone from the classical greek from Thales, and Aximander, and Aximenes, the classics of Greek philosophy, all the way through and the Islamic world, medieval philosophy, Byzantine, Renaissance, Indian philosophy, Africana, through to, well, we, we look at what he's doing most recently, Rome in the Renaissance. Fantastic stuff. And after 370 episodes of this, he's getting pretty good at it. Um, this is an incredible contribution, uh, you know, not just to philosophy, but to everyday learning in general. And, you know, these sorts of resources are exactly the sort of thing that I have in mind. But it began back at the beginning, well, with a plan, but with one person and a microphone and uh, you know definitely worth definitely recommend it if you're interested in philosophy at all oops this article hear me out by the educationalist talks about why audio is useful, some design ideas, and then some practical aspects of creating podcasts. Webcasting, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm not just talking into the Zoom application and sharing my screen, I'm actually doing webcasting and what I'm using is a project, uh, or sorry, a product called Open Broadcasting System. I think that's what the S stands for. And I'll let you have a look at it. Whoops. <laughs> it's not so easy to have a look at while I'm showing it. But basically, this is it here. We're still going to get a little bit of... Uh, uh, mirror image here but uh, this is the application I have different scenes these are the ways of, set of setting up what you're seeing so when I do the TV style I'm just picking the TV style uh, screen and then different sources the audio is coming from my microphone and uh, as well, I have two screens that I can work from, a left screen and a right screen. And the video capture device, which is my uh, webcam. And those are the only sources that I'm using. And then basically all I've done is organize these sources in different ways so that you can see different views of the same thing happening at once. And then over on the right, I've got a virtual camera and that's what I send into Zoom instead of my real camera. I send the virtual camera and all that sends is the feed of whatever I'm doing in OBS. And then I'm also on the right here as you see I'm recording. Now with webcasting what you can also do is use a tool like YouTube so here we are in YouTube. Again, if you have a Google account, just click on that little create button in the upper right hand corner and you could upload a video or you could go live. And that's what I do is I go live. Now, 
you can go live straight from the camera um, or you can go live using OBS all I need to do to be doing a live stream on YouTube is supporting everyday learning give it a title right and description fill in some of this stuff you have to change the language because for me it always defaults to Brazilian Portuguese I have no idea why but it does that oh and I, I prefer English Canada because that's what I speak and it always defaults to the standard YouTube license so you change that then once you've done that we'll come back over to OBS here we are and I just click start streaming it's connecting now if we look at the right here we go it should pop up here in a second here it is now I'm live streaming on YouTube and if you don't believe me we'll go to YouTube and go to my channel and here we are live and I'm gonna make sure my volume is turned off otherwise I'll get incredible feedback so <laughs> we don't want that to happen here I am on YouTube viewing my live broadcast of the uh, online session that I'm doing right now you notice there's a little bit of a lag but you know I'm gonna start shutting all this down and stream I'm doing this on an ordinary cable internet connection I'm, I'm not using fiber optics or anything like that um, so you know it, it won't work well it works marginally if you're using the uh, the Bell uh, what they call five to the node which is twisted copper pair to the home um, but regular cable internet will work fine and of course if you have fiber it'll work fabulously and so I was doing that broadcasting plus broadcasting to zoom and it all worked really well and that's something you can do right set up a zoom conference use something like OBS and broadcast on YouTube live and, and you know it doesn't have to be great production values there are literally thousands maybe tens of thousands maybe hundreds of thousands of live streams happening every minute of every day on YouTube and to me it is crazy that colleges and universities aren't a big part of this What else have we got? Collaborative authoring, and this is the third tool that I want to take you into. And interestingly, we've already used that tool. We used that tool when we went into the Jamboard here. Uh, it's just we didn't know we were using that tool necessarily. But the way that worked, we'll come back to the slide here. Um, I created a document um, to offer support for people who are trying to offer learning during the pandemic and working from home and don't have access to millions of dollars worth of technology. I created a guide called Creating an Online Community Class or Conference Quick Tech Guide. And these are all the different kinds of tools that you can use and obviously I can't go through all of these or any significant subset of these but the tool that I can show you is this tool itself that I use to do it in it's a it's Google Docs and the URL is simply docs.google.com or you can just follow the link in this 
PowerPoint presentation, you get taken to this particular document, and then of course you could create your own new document quite easily from there. You just go to your docs home, <coughs> excuse me, your docs home, and I, I don't know why, but it's sort of hidden down here, the big plus sign. Really, it should be up here somewhere, right? Right here where you can see it. But anyhow, you click on the plus sign, and now we've created a new document. So I'll give it a title. I'll just call it title. And I'll give it some content. Just some content. And now I want to share the document with the world and work collaboratively with other people on editing this document. So I click on share. Now I have the, what do they call it these days? I forget what they call it, but it's kind of, it's uh, whatever it is. It's uh, Google for companies or Google for small companies. It cost me like $5 a month. Uh, you can also do this for free. Um, but anyhow, we have the get link here and then the share. I can add them by putting in their email address, but I don't want to do that uh, because it would take forever to share it with any number of people. And also I might want to share it with strangers. And also I don't want to collect people's emails or email addresses. So what I'm going to do is click here, change link to now there's two things here that I can do. First of all, I can get rid of this downs.ca limitation and just say anyone who has the link can access this document. And then I change this from viewer to editor. Now anyone who has the link can edit the document. I'll copy the link and I'm done. That's all it took. Now. I can go into the chat, and I might still have access to the chat. Here we go. And warning, five minutes left, which is less than that now. I'll put the link in there, and you could actually now go in and edit this document. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, um, so anyhow, IFTTT is another tool that allows me to join all of these services together. Well worth your time. Pro tip, use design tools to make images to put into your documents or your other things. So just to wrap up this session, and it's interesting, we're online, we can't go over the way we used to in person. We can't go over time. But what are some good act practices? Well, one I've harped on from the beginning. Eliminate barriers to access. And there's all kinds of reasons for that. But the main reason is you're trying to get people to do something every day. Don't make it hard. Another good practice. Don't assume particular learning outcomes. Uh, you know, we think that we're trying to teach people specific things, but really, you know, for everyday learning, people have their own reasons, their own purposes for accessing whatever resource that you're offering. Don't limit yourself to one outcome. Think of affordances instead. Think about what are you helping them to do? Another practice Consider various things for people to choose from. Don't just give them one option. Give them many options. And it's kind of ironic. I was doing a Google search, and Google offered me alternative searches. So I was doing a search for different searches, and I got related searches. Keep things clear. Let me repeat that. Keep things clear. Again, it's something people are doing quickly once a day. They're not going to have time for, you know, abstruse language and convoluted vocabulary and jargon for something like this. 
for everyday learning, it's for everyday people. We need to use everyday language. Think standalone activities. You know, in education, we so often want to create this linear program, but we can't do that. And stay on topic. Uh, I was doing a tutorial on Docker recently, which had me do this whole installation of Python, which I had no interest in just to use Docker, and there's no reason for that. So I would have, if I'd had time, had you guys be doing more examples, but I don't have time. Why do we do this? Supports lifelong learning, supports equity and inclusion, allows the institutions to reach diverse markets, helps us support collaborative research, and in the end, creates greater support for our public institutions. That's the presentation, and that's all the time that I have. So I thank you for joining me today. And I, again, I invite you to review my website and review this presentation, which will be available along with slides, audio, video, and transcript online on my website. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. We've stopped recording. Okay, good. So. All right, I'm going to log off. Bye.